Thank you everyone for making your way to your seats. We're about to start our program. Mr. Chairman, are you ready? All right. We'll welcome Chairman Chester A. Ellis to the podium. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. I, I, I know um, I made y'all wait, but good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me say that was the product of traffic. Believe it or not, I walked, I stepped out of the courthouse and into the car at 3.30. And I just got here. All right. I spent uh, 14 minutes and traveled only three car lengths on 17 before you get to the Walmart. But again, uh, my responsibility now is to welcome you to the uh, opening and the ribbon cutting for our children's garden. And um, I, I just want to thank you for taking the time out to be here and to celebrate this with us um, and to go forth um, as we see what can actually happen when good minds come together. All right. And so... Let me just ask you to do me a favor. Give yourself a pat on the back. Everybody here, pat yourself on the back. Because now if it had not been for you, this wouldn't be. And that's why I wanted to do that. And so at this time, I'm going to ask all of you to stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance with me. And then following the Pledge of Allegiance, then Dr. Davis will come. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. And Dr. Davis. Welcome, everybody. I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, this is a project that has included so many people. Uh, if you know me, you know I get up in front of people and talk a lot. But it's usually about fire ants or turf grass or... Uh, that kind of stuff. So this really is not my normal thing. So I was asking somebody, I said, well, what are you supposed to say at one of these? And she said, just thank everybody and kiss the babies. And I don't see any babies, so I think we're good. Um, I do want to start off with this. Uh, one of the speakers today, uh, Mr. Alan Beals, was very, very instrumental in, in uh, this children's garden project. He worked uh, tirelessly to see this happen. Uh, he is not here today because uh, during the night, uh, his wife, many years, Sandy, passed away. Um, and I would like, if you would, to join me in a moment of silence for, for uh, Sandy Beals. Thank you. As I said, uh, Alan played a very strong role in this, but so have many others. Uh, I think my garden staff is back here somewhere. Could you all please stand? Uh, and these are the people who make this place beautiful. We have a tremendous staff out here that does, works very hard, and I very much appreciate that. Uh, there are a couple other people that uh, are not here. Uh, Melanie Ford is the construction manager for the University of Georgia. I'm an entomologist. I kill bugs. I'm really good at killing fire ants, but I'm not a construction manager. So I had Melanie helping me uh, every step of the way. Also, Suzanne Cooler, uh, the department head for uh, engineering, was very, very helpful, uh, as, as was Turnell. Um, this project wouldn't have gotten finished. Uh, Carrie was, was one of the people out here every day doing the, doing the actual work, uh, and this probably Carrie would not have gotten have not gotten finished, and I haven't seen him. I don't, Carrie, are you in here? No, he's not. Um, of course, the architects, uh, and then, of course, the friends of the, uh, of the Coastal Garden. I, I, they were instrumental in this. They started this project long before I even came to the University of Georgia. Uh, my understanding is this project really started in, in like, 2012. Uh, so it's been a long, a long haul. Um, but we're here today to celebrate this ribbon cutting. What I didn't say was we're here to celebrate the completion of this garden because there is never a garden that's ever finished, ever. Uh, 
the thing about a garden is this will be here for decades. I will be retired. I will be gone. There will be gardeners. There will be other gardeners. There will be other directors. And they will each put their finger on this, this garden. Um, and so it's never going to be finished. It's going to grow. Uh, there will be new plants and more features. Uh, there will be, there's a phase two coming. Uh, so there's a great deal to happen with this still. I'm going to tell you another secret about me. I'm an entomologist. I don't like plants. Well, not really. A garden is way more than the plants. And that's the thing that's amazing about a garden. It's not just plants. A garden, for me, is something where there's plant diseases and plant problems and insects. There's a tree out here that I visit every so often. I found seven different species of, of, fire, or of ants on that, tree, that one tree. I bet if I went out there right now, I'd find another couple that I, that I hadn't seen on that particular tree. It's not just the plants. It's not just the big things that you see. There's all kinds of little things that are there to see. So it is about nature. We're all here. Gardens are about social, about bringing people together. Uh, during the, during the uh, groundbreaking, I talked about leaving that legacy to our children. And one of the things I tell people all the time is master gardeners, there's a bunch of master gardeners in here. If you talk to them, ask them why they like to garden. The vast majority of them, I at one point had 6,000 master gardeners as a state master gardener. They all tell me they started gardening as a child with somebody, a parent a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a mentor. And as they grew up, they got away from the gardening because, you know, gardening's work. And it's hot. It's sweaty. And then later in their life, a lot of times once that mentor was gone, they came back to this as a way to honor that mentor. That's what this garden is about. It's for those children to create that opportunity for them to learn to love gardening. Gardening is social, but gardening is also something where you can find that solitude. When I'm having a tough day, and believe me, I have them, I like to be able to be at the garden on that day. I've got two offices. I like, when I'm having a hard day, I want it to be here because I can walk off and I can find a place where I can get that solitude and get myself back together. So it's about social. It's about uh, solitude. It's about recreation. You know, when, I, when I'm here at this office, my wife got me one of these watches. We have a love-hate relationship with this watch. But when I'm here, I never have to worry about, am I going to close my little circles and get my steps? It happens without even thinking about it. At my other office, it's almost impossible. You know, it's very hard for me to get that exercise in at my other office. But here, at a garden, you get that recreation and that health benefit. And gardening is about learning. I'm about to finish up my 27th uh, annual Master Gardener class here in a couple of weeks. Uh, I've been, it is about learning. Every time I teach that class, I learn something. Every time I teach a subject here, I learn something. Uh, gardening is about learning. Extension is about learning. People sometimes ask, you know, why is, why is extension on this garden? You know, what, what is it? It's about our mission. Arch, you asked me a while back to write a 100-word impact statement. I didn't send you all that I wrote. You're probably happy about that. Uh, we're supposed to write a 100-word impact statement, 50 to 100 words. Me being the smart author that I am, I wrote it as a sonnet. I wrote it as a limerick, and I wrote it as a haiku. Haikus are hard because you've got to get the right amount of syllables in there. So here was the haiku I wrote for you, Arch. Extension offers a and R facts, 4-H2, nature, health, and growth. I think that pretty well sums up what we do. Agricultural, natural resources, family consumer sciences, 4-H, and youth. Nature, health, and growth. I could tell a lot of stories. Everybody knows I like to tell stories. I'm trying to keep this pretty short. But when we were choosing the features, I was sitting down with Suzanne uh, and Laura Bullock, and we were trying to decide out of all these features, which ones could we afford? A million dollars sounds like a lot of money until you start spending it, you know? Um, so we were choosing the features that we knew fit this mission. So we chose an amphitheater as a place where people can teach and learn. And what has really surprised me over the last few weeks, I see kids standing up on that stage 
and teaching and talking and doing public speaking to nobody in that amphitheater, but they are enjoying standing on that stage and speaking. So these things you don't even think about. That's why I wanted an amphitheater, so a place to teach. I wanted a kitchen garden because my job as an ag agent is to teach people to grow things. Where does your food and fiber come from? You know, most everybody in here is wearing a plant, cotton, you know. Uh, where does it come from? We wanted to be able to teach that. So we had that ag piece in there. We want to take that, that which we grow, and we want to teach them what to do with it. Family and consumer sciences. How do you cook this? How do you, the food safety. Uh, how do you preserve this? Jackie's in here. Jackie does food preservation. So we're doing agriculture and natural resources. We are doing uh, family and consumer sciences, and of course with youth, our 4-H program. So I think we are fulfilling all of those pieces. One of my mentors for years, uh, Bob Bailey, he'd retired 30 years before I started, and he would come up to my office in Rich and Lexington County in, in South Carolina, and he'd plop himself down and he would talk for hours. And I'm, I'm afraid as a young man I didn't value that the way I should have. But I do remember a few things. Bob Bailey uh, worked with a new fangled thing called television, uh, and so he talked about that a lot. Extension was established in 1914 by the Smith-Lever Act. Hoke Smith was a senator from Georgia. Yay, Georgia. Uh, Frank Lever was a legislator from South Carolina. And one of the things that I very distinctly remember is Bob Bailey telling me, Tim, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you are Frank Lever's county agent. And I've met Frank Lever's family. Bob Bailey knew Frank Lever. And so my understanding and my desire to, to meet the extension mission um, is something more, it was, it was something that was commissioned to me. And I've taken that very seriously. If you, meet, if you go to Columbia and you meet some older people, you may mention Bob Bailey and they will quote a little poem that he quoted at every, every single time he closed out his show. Uh, I never saw the show, uh, but I will tell you this. When I was asked to start a radio program in Afghanistan, I called it the Morning Ag Report. You know where I got that? Bob Bailey's show. Uh, and that's one of the, that's a whole other story we won't go into, but he used to quote this poem at the end of everything. Whoever plants a seed beneath the sod and wants to see it push away the clod Whoever sees neath winter's field of snow, the silent harvest of the future grow. Bob Bailey, and I think the spirit of extension is that, that business of planting that seed and the faith that it's going to grow and the faith that even though it's cold out in the winter, we're going to see those seeds push through. I think that's everything I have on this list that I'm supposed to say. Um, I'll introduce you, Arch. Arch Smith is currently our interim Southeast Extension Director. Uh, you may know Arch uh, because he's, he retired a while back, not, not that long ago, uh, as the state 4-H leader. Uh, and so we have asked him to come uh, speak at this point. And after, after Arch, uh, I'll introduce uh, Pat. Thank you, Tim, and good afternoon. It's great to be with you today, and uh, uh, I, uh, I'm pr privileged to be here. I had an opportunity, I really don't remember how many years ago, but probably 12, 15 years ago, to come here to the gardens and met Jim Andrews, for whom this building uh, is named, and, and I remember uh, Scott Angle, who was dean of the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences at the university, sent me down here to try to uh, talk to uh, Mr. Andrews about a, a project that we had done at Rock Eagle and maybe the possibility that this facility in itself could um, be done in a similar fashion, but that didn't work out. But in that, um, my trips here to the garden have been uh, fascinating. I have a former college roommate who um, wrote the legislation for Senator Nam Sam Nunn to give this property the bamboo farm uh, or research facility, bamboo research facility, to the University of Georgia 
back in the, the early 1980s. Just a few weeks ago, Randy and his wife Suzanne uh, uh, were in Savannah for another meeting, and they asked me would I arrange for them to come here. Uh, Will and Elena uh, showed us around that day, and uh, Randy uh, was, it was his only visit uh, to the gardens, and uh, he was really appreciative of that uh, opportunity just to come see what it was here. And when we drove into the place, he said to me, he said, wow, Arch, I, I didn't expect to see something like this. I expected something that was in pretty rough shape and uh, was uh, not what he uh, saw when he got here. And I say that to say and kind of follow up on what Tim said, is a thank you to all of those who have made it possible. Because sometimes we start with very small things uh, or sometimes we start with things that others get ready to throw out. And if you think about the story that I said about Randy and Senator Nunn donating this piece of property, the federal government was ready to let it go. And so, therefore, it ended up in the University of Georgia's hands. But the partnership that Extension has, not only with the federal government and the University of Georgia, but with Chatham County and the Board of Commissioners here who have made it possible for us to, to uh, enhance the opportunities here at this garden. And I think about the, um, that work of cooperation and when we can cooperate and work together, things can grow and build and help others. And I want to say also to, to those of you that are uh, represent that 501c3, the Friends of the Gardens, thank you also. Because your efforts over many, many years have made a difference in the lives of so many people and made it possible for us to be here today and enjoy not only this building or this facility, but these beautiful gardens out here. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you to the volunteers and the master gardeners who continue to work here. And I had the opportunity just a, a few weeks ago to meet Stan and go see all his beautiful irises here. And Stan, I, I got to come back just a couple of weeks ago and, and see them in bloom. And so uh, what a wonderful sight. So thank you to all, all of you, commissioners, the friends of the gardens, to the employees, to Ann uh, Clayton and, and Tim and others that have worked here over the years uh, to make this, uh, these grounds a success. And as I think about those words that Tim just said, and as I thought about what I might reflect on, is yes, I, I spent my career working with children in the 4-H program. And I'm so happy to see that we have a children's garden here. And when I think about children, they are our future. And I think we all realize that, and sometimes they get put a little bit on the back burner as we think about things sometimes. But I think about the opportunity that children will have to come to these gardens and to this children's garden that we're dedicating today. And they will have an opportunity to learn something about plants and insects and soil. And they will learn science. And it comes to life in a garden. It comes to life through a lot of the programs that 4-H offers. It's not just something that's in a book that we look at in school. It's hands-on learning. And then Tim also mentioned recreation. It's an opportunity for young people to get out of the, uh, put down their uh, device, as I've often said to children, and communicate with one another and build relationships. And, in, and have physical activity, which is also very good because we are a society, as we all know, that uh, could use more physical activity in our lives. And then finally, one of the things that we began to talk about so much more during the last three years of the COVID pandemic was our mental health. And Tim even mentioned that, the opportunity to go out and just be quiet sometimes. The time for inner reflection on who we are 
in what's around us and to understand that we are part of a greater world. And so I think we're children. They will learn science. They will have an opportunity to play because that's what children are supposed to do. And they'll have a time to learn how to reflect and improve their mental health. So I say again, thank you to all of you that have made this possible. And uh, I hope that uh, I'll have many uh, returns to this site to see this garden. As Tim described, it will change, it will grow, and there will be a lot of different hands that will help move it forward. Thank you. This time I'd like to recognize Pat Hackney. Pat used to do my job once upon a time. And uh, you know one of the neat things about uh, I was at Clemson for 23 years and I came down here in 2016. One of the coolest things are the people that I never knew uh, and have become such good friends uh, and such strong supporters and uh, somebody who gives me such, such wise counsel. Uh, Pat standing here uh, in place of uh, Mr. Allen Beals, uh, Pat, if you would come on behalf of the friends. Yes, it saddens me that Alan can't be here today, and um, Sandy would love to be here too, but Alan will be back with us, and we have wonderful memories of Sandy and her vivaciousness. I want to give you a little bit background about myself as to see why I'm um, doing this today, but in the early 90s, I was serving as the Chatham County Extension Director and I was visited by the University of Georgia Cooperative Extension Service Director, Wayne Jordan. Director Jordan told me that, that the university was having trouble justifying the support for this facility and asked me to form a community advisory committee to study and determine the best use for these 51 acres and to find out if the community was interested in helping provide support. I immediately recruited a team of over 30 community leaders from all segments, including education, business, government, industry, and agriculture, who spent months along with extension leadership from Athens to study the opportunities and needs of the coastal area for a facility such as this. As a result, one of the first things we did was to establish the Friends of the Coastal Gardens, the 501c nonprofit organization, to help provide volunteer, financial, and educational support for this facility. So here we are today, 30 years later, Commissioner. Now I would like to share with you the re prepared remarks from Alan. first paragraph he put in this, and I'm going to read this, was, um, what a joyful day. Well, this is not a joyful day for Alan, but it would have been under, under different circumstances. He also said, historians say that the past is prologue, worthy of notice. Twenty-five years ago this month, Sandy and Alan, and I'm going to go back to his tense, he wrote it, Sandy and I served as chairs of the third annual Sunday Supper in the Strawberry Patch offered by Friends of the Coastal Gardens with an attendance of over 500 people. What a beginning. And we were connected and inspired. What a trip over these su subsequent years. Five years later, the university wanted to sever its relations with the gardens and offered an option for the local community to take over the physical responsibility and management of the facility. The challenge was answered by Chatham County and the Friends organization. My wife Sandy became the president for three terms and I became a volunteer lobbyist for the legislative efforts to redirect the vision of the gardens known by many as the historic bamboo farm. We were successful and look at what has happened. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that Jackie Ogden, who's in our office today, brought Sandy and Alan on board with the friends, and that was an excellent move, Jackie. 
First, a new master plan was initiated, funded by friends, and conducted by the UGA College of Ag Environment and Design. It's the framework of what exists out here today. The next step was the creation of a strategic plan for implementation that brought stakeholders together, the UGA Extension Service, Chatham County, and the community through the Friends Organization, a three-legged stool organization model, and it has worked. The results to date from the development plan and the strategic plan of October 2007 are 11 different component gardens within the overall development have been funded by friends from 10,000 to over 150,000. A new 1.5 million education building funded primarily by Barbara and Jim Andrews where we stand today. A world-class camellia garden built with donated plants and volunteer friends labor expanded and now recognized as having the largest number of camellia species in the U.S. The largest Louisiana iris garden in the U.S. donated by Friends member Stan Gray who's also with us today and thank you Stan. In 2013 Friends invi invested 25,000 to initiate a holiday lights exhibit. Visitors came and a modest fee raised slightly over 25000 So the Friends doubled the investment and expanded. Today, the Holiday Lights features millions of bulbs and exhibits and is probably the largest display in the region and maybe in the state. Even the Bamboo Maze is the largest of its size in the U.S. and Sandy and Allen funded the Bamboo Maze. The children's garden we celebrate today was initiated by the Friends in 2013 when we hired a leading national design firm to prepare the initial detailed design. With modifications along the way, it's back there today. The Chatham County Commission and the county staff have been very supportive of our efforts throughout this 15-year process in so many ways. Friends are grateful that the Commission supported our request to include the Children's Garden, the keystone to the future, in the 2013 referendum and again in the 200, 2018, both supported by Chatham Community. The Friends' vision in 2007 was the Coastal Gardens will be a premier destination for horticultural, educational, coastal gardening practices. The vision is still valid today. This 53-acre botanical garden is in a critical place to enjoy the growth of this region in the years ahead. The children of today are the adults and family leaders of tomorrow. The three-legged stool still seems to work. The timing is right. There is much to do. Let's keep leading. Thank you. A couple more things I want to do. Uh, we have a video we're going to show you uh, since we can't actually be in the gardens because made a really good call to not be out there today. <laughs> Uh, but the first thing I want to do is I want to, I want to point out some of the people who are in this room. Uh, and I'm not going to name names. I'm not pointing any individual. It's groups. If you were at the University of Georgia, would you please stand? Because I want to see, I want people to see the various groups. Jackie, yeah, my gardeners. Okay. So that's, that's the folks here representing the University of Georgia. Uh, Master Gardeners, will you please stand? I know there's several of you who are in, in here. These are, these are the volunteers who kind of help us keep going. I've got a pretty small staff. When you think of 52 acres, uh, and I've got, I've got about, each gardener gets about 10 acres. So if it wasn't for these master gardeners, we wouldn't get the work done, so thank you. Friends of the Coastal Garden, would you please stand? And there's some of these that's, that's both, or more than one. Thank you. 
county employees. Thank you, thank you. And I've saved the best for last. Uh, commissioners, would you please stand? <laughs> These are the people who really put it together for us and pay the bills uh, to make this garden a reality. And I can't thank you all enough for the roles that you have played uh, in, what, in what is going on out here and what is coming out here. So thank you so much. Uh, very much appreciate it. And I did, I, I saved the best for last. Um, and with that, Catherine, if you want to show, or whoever I'm supposed to show, let's, let's show the video. Let me say uh, we thank all of you for being here and um, we thank you for that you have put in the time. And so now we're going to step outside, as I understand, and we're going to cut the ribbon, all right? And um, before we do that, let me recognize Commissioner Whiteley here with us, all right? And uh, I just want you to know, Dr. Davis, that Commissioner Whiteley calls this his hood. <laughs> Yeah, because he lives right around there, all right? So we, en we enjoy that relationship. So if you would join me outside, and those of you who need to, Catherine, if you are going to arrange for them to get in the right place, okay? Thank you, everyone. We're going to do refreshments now, so please help yourself.